Well, there's been another terrorist attack carried out in the name of Allah, and you know what that means. It's time for Western politicians to protect Islam from criticism, using reasoning that should make all of us realize if ignorance is bliss, our leaders must be the happiest people in the universe. Speaking of total morons, here's conservative MP Michael Tomlinson asking Prime Minister Theresa May to confirm that the latest Islamic terrorist attack was not, in fact, Islamic. Silly me, when I want to know if something's Islamic, I go to Islam's most trusted sources. But when politicians want to know if something's Islamic, they go to other politicians, assuming they can't find an actor. Will the Prime Minister agree with me that what happened was not Islamic, just as the murder of Airy Neve was not Christian, and that in fact both are perversions of religion? You wouldn't call the murder of Airy Neve Christian, would you? So why would you call an ISIS-linked attack by a jihadi Islamic? Now, most of you are thinking to yourselves, the reason I wouldn't call the murder of Ari Neve Christian is that I've never heard of Ari Neve and I have no idea why he was killed. Quick history lesson. Ari Neve was a British politician who was assassinated in 1979 by the Irish National Liberation Army, a socialist group dedicated to creating a socialist republic in Ireland. Yes, MP Tomlinson had to take us back to an assassination that took place when he was one year old to try to make a point about all religions having their extremists. So why wouldn't we call it a Christian attack? Probably because the attack had absolutely nothing to do with Christianity. Airy was viewed by the socialists as a champion of the British ruling class who was going to use the British military to crush their political ambitions in Ireland. Apart from this obvious historical point, there's an additional factor. Namely, that Christians aren't supposed to be going around assassinating people. What are Christians commanded? Whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. And if he is thirsty, give him a drink. Let all that you do be done in love. Walk in love. Pursue peace with all men. Honor all people. How in the name of common sense can you interpret these commands as somehow suggesting that we car bomb British politicians who stand in the way of a socialist revolution? You can't, and according to MP Tomlinson, a man who could study for a blood test and still manage to fail, this means that we shouldn't call an ISIS-inspired attack Islamic. Prime Minister Theresa May, a woman who once put lipstick on her forehead because someone told her to make up her mind, couldn't agree more. I absolutely, I absolutely agree. And uh, it is wrong to describe this as Isla Islamic terrorism. It is Islamist terrorism. It is a perversion of a great faith. I don't know what makes politicians so stupid, but it's really working. So British Prime Minister and world-renowned Quran scholar Theresa May calls terrorist attacks a perversion of a great faith. But if slaughtering unbelievers in the name of Allah is a perversion of Islam, Islam has been perverted for nearly 14 centuries. What does Allah say in the Quran? Fight those who do not believe in Allah, Surah 9, verse 29. O prophets, strive hard against the unbelievers and the hypocrites and be unyielding to them, Surah 9, verse 73. Surely Allah has bought of the believers their persons and their property for this, that they shall have the garden. They fight in Allah's way, so they slay and are slain, Surah 9, verse 111. O you who believe, fight those of the unbelievers who are near to you and let them find in you hardness, Surah 9, verse 123. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and those who are with him are severe against against disbelievers and merciful among themselves, Surah 48, verse 29. Allah also says in the Quran, Surah 33, verse 21, that Muhammad is the pattern of conduct for Muslims. What did Muhammad do? In Sahih Muslim 129, he declares, I have been commanded to fight the people until they bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. What tactic brought Muhammad victory? In Sahih al-Bukhari 2977, he proclaims, I have been made victorious with terror, not with love or kindness or interfaith dialogue. Terror brought him victory. Now, can you think of anyone who recently took Allah's words and Muhammad's example seriously? I can. His name was Khalid Masood. He's dead now after killing several people because Allah told him that true Muslims slay and are slain. And yet MP Tomlinson and PMA insist that Khalid Masood has only followed a perversion of a great faith.
But if Khalid followed a perversion of Islam, Muhammad was the one who perverted it. Since Muhammad's perversion has lasted nearly 14 centuries, we can now say that, according to British Prime Minister Theresa May, Muhammad was history's greatest pervert. If you'd like to learn the game plan of this epic pervert in order to prevent future terrorist attacks, be sure to watch this video. And take notes.